¿Cómo estás? ¿Así, así? ¿Bien? Yo soy muy bien. Todo lo que puede ser imaginado es real. Serendipity is defined as events or occurrences that occur by chance, but that are beneficial or make one happy in life. I'm going to share a journey with you, my personal story of this hospital of the future. As you know, many of you follow me on social media, etc. I've been traveling a lot over the last three to four years. People often accuse me of living in a plane and not at home in East London. I've traveled to about 35 countries over the last three or four years, working with governments, health ministries, colleges, universities to reimagine healthcare in the future. My aim has always been how do we redefine education and healthcare to make it more accessible, more affordable, and more equitable. And for me, technology is an interface, a utility to figure out how we re engineer society to ensure that we all help mankind to a better degree. The story starts in 2017 in San Diego. I was talking at a conference called Exponential Medicine, which is part of the Singularity University events. My talk was always around this whole concept of democratizing education and healthcare, scaling up uh, the access to people around the globe. A lot of my work has been in conflict zones, so places where never, no one can get to, to work with refugees, people in war-torn war zones, to figure out how we improve their health of, of the world as a whole. One day, I was walking in the Innovation Lab, minding my own business, looking at the startups in the morning, 8.30 in the morning, I remember. Suddenly, two people appeared before me, walking towards me, pointing at me, laughing at me, smiling. Didn't know who they were. They got closer and closer, and they just jumped on me. I said, Shafi Ahmed, we found you. I said, fine. They said, we've been sent from Bolivia to come find you in San Diego on a mission. Now that we found you, we're so happy. I said, great, interesting. I've never been to South America. Didn't know any Bolivians. But anyway, this was an interesting conversation. I said, what do you guys want? He said, well, look, we've been sent by our colleague, Martin Dockweiler, uh, to come and find you, to drag you to Bolivia. Will you come? Promise us you'll come. Of course. I confirmed I would come. Hi, everyone. It's Shafi Ahmed, a virtual surgeon here in San Diego and exponential medicine. I met two wonderful people from Bolivia. Hi. <laughs> and we're looking forward to joining you sometime in the future, in the next year talk about the future of technology, education, artificial intelligence, VR, AR. So I'm delighted to have been uh, invited to Bolivia. Never been to South America before. Very excited to see you soon. So wish you luck. And that was kind of it. Before they left, they said, actually, we want you to give you this. We want you to come to Bolivia. Um, we want to give you an honorary PhD for work that you've done in the last few years to kind of reward the hard work that you've had and your vision around how we improve the lives of many. And I was really touched, of course, getting this from people you've never seen before and from a country you never visited. So there was a strange kind of connection there. Of course, I would come along, etc. But that kind of slipped my mind because I was busy with my clinical practice. I'm a cancer specialist at the Royal Hospital. So I have a busy clinical job and I kind of forgot about that kind of conversation. Until, of course, a few months later, I gave a lot of keynotes around the world and I was invited to Mexico City uh, to give the keynote for the new Digital Health Forum, the first time in Mexico thinking about digital health of the future. The day before I was going there, I got an email from Martin Dockweiler, this person from Bolivia who sent his team to come find me in San Diego. He said, I'm coming to Mexico to come and see you and to talk about your trip to Bolivia. I said, no problems. I'd kind of forgotten about it, but of course I'll entertain you when you come along to Mexico. So one morning I woke up in Mexico. I got a text from Martin. Say, how are you? It's Martin, I'm here, can I meet you? I said, of course you can. Yeah, let's go meet together, let's have a conversation. We had a conversation, and then I found out about who this person really was. He was a man who was of Bolivian. His role was to educate the whole of Bolivia, to make education accessible. He runs four or five universities across all the four precincts of Bolivia. He teaches 36,000 students per year. That's affordable. And his mission was really to improve the healthcare of his nation. So he said, look, I want you to come to Bolivia, and we want to invite you. 
by the way, I've got an itinerary for you. At which point, over the breakfast table, he put a piece of paper down. So just read that. Tell me if you're happy with it. I'll share it with you. I'll read it out to you. Day one. You come to La Paz, have breakfast with the President of Bolivia. <laughs> You'll be awarded the National Congress Medal. And you'll address Congress, and there'll be a press conference afterwards. <laughs> Day two, of course, you'll come to my university in Santa Cruz. We'll give you an honorary PhD, you'll have a press conferences, address um, plenty of press that will be there, talk about your work. And day three, doesn't get any better than this, of course, you meet the mayor of Santa Cruz, he'll give you the keys to the city. <laughs> I said, so I thought about it, I said, you know what, I've had kind of better offers, but this is maybe, let me, let me have a quick think about whether that's something that I might kind of want to entertain. But of course, fast forward a month later, we decided that yes, I was intrigued, <laughs> of course as you would be, uh, about this kind of offer from somebody you've never met before, from a country you've never been to. I was in Singapore uh, talking to the Ministry of Health about some other projects, and I had to kind of get a flight to meet the right people at the right time. So I flew from Singapore to London, then London via Madrid, Madrid to Santa Cruz, a 35 hour flight with hardly any gaps in between. Now you can imagine getting out of the airport, I was tired, long travel journey, I had kind of, you know, pretty unkempt for that length of time. I got to Santa Cruz and I met Martin who said, great chef, you're here, but you can't get out, we've got to go straight to La Paz. He said, they're waiting for you. Didn't quite appreciate what that meant. <laughs> we then got on a flight eating cocoa leaves, drinking cocoa tea, because at 10,000 feet, I'm, I need to survive, right, at altitude. Um, so we finally got to La Paz, got to the airport, got out through the security, and then went into the concourse. I was a bit tired and kind of wanted to get to a hotel room, right? Llegó en horas de la mañana hasta el aeropuerto internacional de Lanto, es catalogado el gurú de la medicina, es de profesión médico cirujano, el hindú Shafi Ahmed. I had arrived and they were waiting for me. What's not clear here, you see, they'd had 30 or 40 paparazzi following around this airport. <laughs> they had interrupted all the channels in Bolivia to show my entrance into Bolivia. They then took me to a VIP room so I could address the nation. I was really ready to address the nation, wearing a, a t-shirt, a jacket, and a pair of jeans, of course. <laughs> they then said, of course, <laughs> they then said, of course, right, you need to go to the palace. They're kind of ready for you. So fine, I said, I'm happy to go to the palace. So obviously we got outside and there's a little car waiting for me. I remember it was a BMW X6, it was like four by four. I, I kind of got it, didn't think much of it until I realized I had my own motorcade. I had four cars, nine motorcycles just for me to take me around La Paz to meet the president of Bolivia. So, you know, it's interesting. So um, we got there at record time. We veered off to a hotel to get changed, get ready for my invitation to the palace. I did meet the president of Bolivia, Alva, Eva Morales, and also the vice president, um, Alva Linares. And actually we had a long discussion about what I was there for, uh, which wasn't obvious to me at the time, but I kind of <laughs> was getting used to the idea of why I might be there. And we had a conversation about health inequalities, where we might help, what the vision might be going forward. In fact, I remember at the end, the vice president went on national TV and said, we've now going to sort out healthcare in Bolivia with Shafi Ahmed. <laughs> like, no pressure. I, you know, I said, okay, fine. We'll see kind of what we can do uh, with this kind of effort. Of course, oh, I'm going to go back on so the story. Let's go back on the story. That's right. Oops. Yeah, so this was in, in, in um, La Paz. And of course, um, they want to take me around La Paz, show me all the sites. And I saw a football stadium that was there. The highest one in the world. I thought I was quite keen of looking at it. I'm a keen football kind of um, a fan. They said, it's not open, but we'll open it for you. <laughs> so they opened it. I went down, played some football with the ministers there for a, a few minutes, and I wandered <laughs> off, thinking, that's interesting. We were running late, of course, and we had a flight to go back to Santa Cruz, an hour's flight. We were about two hours late, and I was a bit worried. 
They said, don't worry, the plane's waiting for you. <laughs> they drove me, this escort, onto the tarmac, onto the plane. Two hours late. The plane was there with full packed people. I was really upset. You know, imagine there was you waiting for a plane as some guys delayed. So I got onto the plane, and the only time in my life, the pilot announced my entry onto the plane. <laughs> and everyone cheered. It was just surreal. Anyway, we got, to, we got to Santa Cruz, at which point they took me to a television studio. They changed the whole of TV for an hour for my presence. I did get the keys to the city, Mayor of Santa Cruz, and of course, I did get my PhD. <laughs> they they, they kind of quite like me in Santa Cruz. I kind of have my rock star moment. What you can't see, if you actually zoom out, there's 2,000 people waiting for their selfies. It was just ridiculous. But anyway, I kind of got used to having selfies taken with gorgeous women. Who won, of course? Back to reality, of course. Then they said, look, this is the reason why. Bolivia is a poor country. It's the Western Hemisphere. It ranks just above Haiti as the, world's, as the worst in healthcare provision. We need to do better. We're a poor country, but we want to aim big. Why do we have to think so small? Uh, we have huge inequalities of uh, healthcare professionals, of course, and quality of healthcare isn't great. And we think maybe you can help us with this vision. And Martin was quite clear that his legacy was to lead healthcare as a provision for the people of Bolivia. He's passionate about his own country, he's left education as a legacy, they want to lead healthcare as a legacy. So he said to me, here we go, this is my plan, I've got this hospital that I really want to build. Um, it's going to be futuristic, be digital, we want to compare it to the best. And would you mind being the CEO? So I kind of thought about it. Because perhaps I could interest you if we kind of name it after you. <laughs> and so your name was named after me. <laughs> and so now I have a hospital named after me in Bolivia. But of course, most people worry about, most people have hospitals named after them when they die, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of concerned about my kind of longevity in this world that we live in now that I've got a hospital named after me, of course. We then met in Paris a few months later to figure out the, uh, the conversation and we signed a, a document saying, yes, we'll do this together. Let's really reimagine healthcare and create this new blank canvas of healthcare in the future. This is like a world tour, isn't it? We went to Sofia, where I ran a Webit conference, which you must come to. It's another great tech event uh, in Eastern Europe. And this is kind of what you get, spectacular lasers and fires, etc. And I launched the hospital in Webit. Desde Bulgaria hay una muy buena noticia para Bolivia. Sí, señores, desde Sofía, la capital de Bulgaria, donde pasa él. Today, I'll announce something quite interesting. We're launching the first digital hospital in South America. My friends in Bolivia, in front of the Se está llevando a cabo una feria futurista de ciencia y tecnología en Bulgaria. Y nuestro equipo... So here we are now. So we've moved fa move fast forward to the hospital. We've got a name. We've got a design. We've thought long and hard about what it might look like in the future, of course. But actually, when you are thinking about a uh, hospital, you've got to think about... Oops, yeah. Oh. So we're obviously thinking about the infrastructure, the demographics, what's required in a hospital that doesn't have a, a place at the moment. It's for 3 million people, ultimately for 9 million people in Bolivia. It's about how many beds does it need, what services it require, how do we create a safe, effective hospital environment to allow for access to healthcare for those people. So we're building this as we speak, um, and this is the kind of vision that we have. When someone gives you a blank canvas, of course, that blank canvas or a kind of blackboard, you get a piece of chalk, you start thinking about what would I want in this hospital of the future. So here we are, here we've got a huge interest in what we're doing. We're gonna create this hospital with voice tech, face recognition, with artificial intelligence. We've got partners at Google and GE Healthcare. We can really design healthcare as it's supposed to, forward integration of everything, so data becomes the key. And that's the kind of vision that we have on this hospital. You may think it's imagination. It's real, here we are. Uh, this only happened two weeks ago. I went for a weekend trip to Santa Cruz and it's built already. We have 200 workers working day out and night to build this dream for Bolivia and it'll be opening in July of this year. Now I'm actually taking a sabbatical for the first time in 26 years in clinical practice. I think that I think the people of Bolivia deserve the kind of support that we need to give them to create something unique and to be a measure of healthcare throughout the world and perhaps be uh, an example to all of us. It's interesting, we talked about serendipity before. Here am I, uh, a person from Bangladesh who grew up in a village um, many years ago with no technology, with no running water, with no electricity. We grew up the first five years in an environment where we're having 
uh, baths and swimming in the lake with everybody else. That was our kind, of, our, our, our kind of shower, if you like. Gone from there to Bolivia to create something hopefully would be unique for the world to, to understand. I said before at the beginning, todo lo que puedo ser imaginado es real. Gracias.